Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals. It's like the hour for revival. I'm your brother in the Lord. Brother HR, and it's always the hour for revival. Glory, hallelujah, Father. Hide me behind the cross. So it be none of me but all of you. Speak through these lips of clay. And if I leave here singing, I got just what I wanted and more from the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory. Hallelujah. I'm going to wait for a few people to tune in and say hello before I get started. But I'm going to entitle the message this afternoon, When God Gets the Last Laugh. When God Gets the Last Laugh. And I'm glad that I'm in a car because y'all going to need to buckle your seatbelts for this one. I'm telling you what, this is going to be a ride on the wild side. But baby, let me tell you something. This is a message you don't want to miss. And if you're tuning in, please share the message that other people might receive the word of God and be blessed like you're being blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. If you got your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Psalms. Uh, not Psalms. <laughs> book of Luke. I look at that Psalms right over there on my other notes. <laughs> the book of Luke, chapter 8, verse 50. Hold on. Wait a minute. I'm going to say this, verse 50, amen, Luke 8 and 50, and I'm going to read to verse 56, amen, hallelujah, Luke 8, 50 through 56, amen, thank you, Jesus, amen, bless God, but when Jesus heard it, he answered saying, fear not, believe only. And she shall be made whole. He gave two commands. God bless you, Sister Donna and Leslie. God bless y'all. Amen. He gave them two commands. Fear not and only believe. Sometimes a lot of people are afraid of a move of God in their life. They feel like... They ain't getting nothing but hell hitting them on every side. They feel like, Lord, where are you in my time of trouble? But I'm here to tell you that God has got the last laugh over the enemy. God is here for you. And no matter what you're going through right now, what the devil meant for your evil, God is going to turn it around for your good. Hey, Bishop Donald, God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Whatever you're going through right now, whatever the devil meant for your evil, God's going to turn it around for your good. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless God. Now check this out. And he said, only believe and she shall be made whole. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He said, believe and she will be made whole. Do not have fear. But believe and she'll be made whole. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes you don't need to tell your... Actually, let me tell you something. If you're facing a mountain right now, don't tell your God how big your mountain is. You tell your mountain how big your God is. He told you to speak to the mountain. Don't ask God to remove the mountain that you're facing. You remove it by faith in God. Only believe and do not doubt. Do not have fear, but believe. And that thing that's in your life that shouldn't be there will be cast down and thrown into the sea. Come on, somebody. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Mountains crumble at the power of the name of Jesus Christ. So whatever mountain you're facing today, your God is bigger and greater than any mountain you could face. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He makes the crooked paths straight. He makes the mountains to bow down and be still. He makes the wind and the rain to be still at his very command. He said that if he be for us, who could be against us? Your God is a good God. And no matter what you're facing, he's already 
done took care of it before it ever gets to you. He's there, and he's already took care of you, and he's already took care of the situation. Because remember, before they ever went into battle, God had already gone ahead of them. God has gone ahead of you into your situation, and he's already met your need. He's already met you there. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. He's speaking life to your dead situation right now. Everybody said it's a dead situation. They spoke death over your life. But God says that though it were dead, it shall live. Amen. That's what he said about Lazarus. He said, those that die, if they believe in me, they didn't die. You know, he told Lazarus, he said, Though he believed in, if he believed in me, though he were dead, that's what I'm trying to say, yet shall he live. He believed in Jesus and he died. But God brought back that which was dead. He even told them, he said, don't fear, but believe and you're going to see a resurrection because Jesus said I am the resurrection and I am the life. I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but honey, no matter what the devil's laughing in your face about, no matter what it looks like, God is going to bring a resurrection miracle to your life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you'll not fear, but believe. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. That means that fear is a spirit because look at this now. He said perfect love cast out fear. It's a spirit. God's power is greater than the spirit of fear. Let me tell you something. A lot of people have fear and they wonder, Lord, can it even be done? They look at their dead situation and instead of speaking life to it, they're like, well, it's dead, it's gone. I might as well just put the flowers on the graveside and let this thing be dead. But God has a plan to bring a resurrection in your dead situation. I don't know who I'm preaching to this afternoon. But let me tell you something. God's got the last laugh. I'm trying to get there, but the Lord just won't let me get to that point just yet. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I hope this is blessing somebody, though. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But check this out. But when Jesus heard it, he, sa he answered, saying to the Father, to him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter and James and John and the father and the mother of the maiden. Now, wait a minute. Why did God move on this man's behalf? Because this man moved toward Jesus, and it looked like the situation died. It looked like the person that he loved died before he got to Jesus. And Jesus said, because he moved in faith, that I am who I said I am. I'm going to bless him. And I'm going to move on his behalf. So he told him, he said, don't fear, but believe and she'll be made whole. And he said, take me on to her. Because everybody said, don't trouble the master. Thank y'all for sharing. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That's right. Fear is a liar. Amen. But check this out. Fear is defeated by faith. Let faith arise in you today. Amen. He takes us from glory to glory. But there's a place of transition there. And that place in the middle is where we find the most trouble in our life. But from glory to glory, he's taking us from glory. From whatever we're in into a higher level of glory. But that place of waiting until God blesses you. Let me tell you something. If God closes a door, praise him in the hallway till he opens up another door. Are you hearing what I'm saying today from the throne of God? 
Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Bless God. But he didn't let everybody come in. He only let a few people come in. Those that had faith got to stay. Those that believed God got to stay. But now hold on. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Not everybody can agree with you for God to touch you if there's doubt in them and there's fear in them. You got to have somebody that says, I know that my God can do it. Come hell or high water, he's still a good God and he still can provide for me. He's going to do what he said he'd do because he ain't a man that he should lie. You got to get connected with the right people. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Not just hang around people with any kind of lifestyle. You've got to hang around those that have a lifestyle of prayer and have a lifestyle of faith. You've got to hang around those that can lift you up and encourage you in the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But let me tell you something. God allowed only a few people in the room with him. Somebody say God just needs a few good men. A few good women, because there was a woman there too, my friends. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless God. Amen. But now check this out, y'all. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He can use anybody with faith. I'm going to say that again. God can use anybody with faith. If you've got faith, God can use you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Because your faith changes the atmosphere and will affect other people's life around you. Why do I know that? How do I know that? Because of one reason. The Bible said when they opened up the roof and brought the body down of the man that was paralyzed, the Bible said Jesus saw the faith of his friends. Didn't see that man's faith. He saw the faith of the friends. And the faith of the friends changed the atmosphere for the friend to receive. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. I didn't know I was going in this direction, y'all. I really didn't. Amen. Praise God. I had an entirely different thing planned out, but God knew what he was doing. I believe this is a rhema word for everybody in the body of Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Like the saying, let go and let God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let go of fear and step into faith. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. And all wept and bewailed her. They were crying. But he said, weep not. She is not dead, but sleeping. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Then they laughed him to scorn, knowing, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out. And took her by the hand and called, saying, Maid, arise. Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straight away. And he commanded to give her meat. And her parents were astonished. But he charged them that they should not tell no man what was done. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. God has got the last laugh. Let me tell you something. The doctors might have told you it's over. Everybody else around you might have said it's over. But let me tell you something. God's got the last laugh, 
in your dead situation, in your life, whatever you're going through, God has got the last laugh. My God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let me explain this to you. If God can't get no one to agree with him, he'll put everybody away and say, I'm God all by myself. I'll do it when no one else will believe me. But I'll do it because I'm good to my word is what he's saying. Amen. He's good and he's good all the time. He's God and he's God all by himself. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. The man of God wrote and said, who is this coming out uh, east of Eden uh, whose garments are soaked with the blood of Basra? Or whose garments are from Basra? Who's coming out of the east? And the Lord said it was himself. The Lord said it was himself. His garments had been soaked with the blood of his enemies. Because he had already gone before them and won the battle. He's God and he's God all by himself. He don't need anybody's help. He's God. But he fights for those who need his help. He'll move on behalf of those that need his help. His throne is established in glory. And he'll move on your behalf if you just believe him for the miracle and will not doubt. Because God has got the last laugh. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God's got the last laugh. Everybody said it's hopeless. And you might as well... Just go on and call the undertaker to your dream. Might as well just go on and give up on dreaming about that because it don't look like it's ever going to happen. But God. Along came God. When nobody else would believe, God believed. God believed on your behalf and on mine for a miracle. Amen. When our faith touches the heart of God, God moves. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. Right before the miracle with Zacchaeus' daughter, Jairus' daughter, sorry, Jairus' daughter, right before the miracle of Jairus' daughter, he had just healed a woman with an issue of blood who had pushed through the crowd for a miracle. On the way to heal Jairus' daughter, Jesus was stopped. Now check this out, y'all. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And the Bible said that Jesus stopped and he looked and said, Who touched me? And Peter said, Well, Lord, how can you say who touched you? We all thronged you. We all touched you. But he said, No. Somebody touch me. I felt power, dunamis, dynamite, power come out of my body. He felt power go out of his virtue, his power, his virtue, his life went out of him and in to her and Jesus gave her a miracle that she was looking for because she did not fear what the crowd said but she believed if I can only get to Jesus he's going to have the last laugh on my behalf somebody better shout God's got the last laugh on your behalf amen thank you Jesus hallelujah amen is somebody getting blessed today Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. God is the only one who reserves the right to have the last laugh. Amen. Remember, this happened with Sarah. Now, I tell you what. I know that God laughs at his enemies. I'm getting ahead of myself right here. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. 
I know that God will laugh at his enemies, but he also laughs at his children too when we act crazy sometimes. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I mean, I always heard it said, if you want to hear God laugh, tell him your plans. Let me tell you something. Sarah had been believing God for a long time. Sarah had been believing God for a long time for a baby. And Abraham had too. And it didn't look like God was ever going to bring that need to pass. It looked like the dream had died. It looked like the blessing had become now to herself within her own heart a burden. She was burdened for a child, but she couldn't bear a child for him. She wanted the promise of God, but it didn't seem like the promise was going to ever be birthed in her life. I'm preaching to somebody who's called in the ministry right now. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But now check this out. God is the only one who reserves the right to get the last life. Check this out. Amen. Genesis 18, 10 through 16. She went behind the door and laughed. The door of the tent. When God said she would have a child, she went behind the door and laughed. But let me tell you something, behind the door, God's on the other side of the hallway. He hears what's going on in your life, amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost, glory to God, amen. Thank you, Jesus, amen. When God said she was going to have a child, she went behind the door and laughed. But now check this out. God said when she come back, why did you laugh at me? She said, I I didn't laugh at you, Lord. He said, oh, but you did. God wasn't mad at her. God was going to have fun. God was going to have fun with her, his child. Sarah was his. She belonged to the Lord. But now check this out. Bless your Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He said, by the time nine months has come, you will have a child. And he said, you will call his name Isaac. And Isaac means to laugh. I've been setting the whole sermon up by the Lord. Actually, the Lord been setting it up. I mean, I've just been preaching like this and, you know, talking the way I was because God wanted to set it up like this. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Isaac, and he told him, he said, Isaac means to laugh. Is what he told him and her. Isaac means to laugh. God got the last laugh. Every time she called for Isaac, she would call in her child by name and the joy was remind it was reminded of her. Hey, God's laughing. He's enjoying in this. This was awesome because let me tell you something. God laughed about it because he knew there's nothing impossible for me. So every time she called her blessing for dinner, every time she called her blessing to go wash up, Isaac, laughter, joy was reminded of her that God keeps his promise, that God has got the last laugh. But I want you to understand something else a little deeper here. Abraham laughed because he believed God. Genesis seventeen seventeen, When God told him the promise that he told Sarah, he fell to the earth and laughed because he believed. He was joyful. Oh, hallelujah. But at the same time, in his own mind, he was doubtful. But he still had faith. He's like, I'm old, but I know God can do it. Sarah lied, I'm old, and I don't know uh, if anything's ever going to come of this. But it did. It came a blessing. A blessing was birthed out of both belief and promise. Belief and promise birthed the blessing. But now here you go. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Amen. 
I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Think about this. The Bible says that God required of Abraham for his son, Isaac, to be offered. God asked Isaac, uh, God asked Abraham, give me your joy. Give me your laugh. Give me back what I promised you. I'm going to take, I'm going to have you take his life. And if you look at that story in the book of Genesis and you read it, it actually matches to Jesus Christ at the crucifixion. And did you know this, the same place where Isaac was off, was about to be offered up as a living sacrifice? You know what? The same place is where Jesus was offered up for us. The Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. See, Abraham prophesied. He said, God will provide himself a lamb for the sacrifice. But now here's what he, he, he we know he got a ram. So how did this great prophet miss a, a lamb and get a ram. He didn't miss the lamb and get a ram. He got the ram, but he prophesied of the lamb. Amen. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Abraham was a priest. And he believed God. John, the cousin of Jesus, sees Jesus coming down the dusty road. And he says, Behold the Lamb of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. Yes, God will test you. Amen. And God does laugh last. Amen. He he who laughs laughs. I understand. I love that saying. Amen. But now check this out, y'all. When God asked Abraham to sacrifice Isaac, the Bible says in the New Testament that Abraham believed God to the point that he knew if he sacrificed his joy, if he sacrificed what God asked him to sacrifice, that he believed God wouldn't done with his promise and that he would raise him back up. And God did. He uh, did not allow Isaac to die. But he blessed Abraham for his faith. And Abraham was called the father of faith. Because he believed God so much. He's like, I'm even going to prophesy before I go to the mountain. He looked at the people that he was with and he said, me and the lad are going to worship. He said, y'all stay. <laughs> he said, y'all stay behind because he knew that if they went up there they would hinder what God had in store he knew if his people that he was traveling with went up there then they would hinder what God had in store and he said y'all stay here with the ass y'all stay with the donkeys he said me and the lad are going yonder to worship it was a three-day journey uphill. And he got there. And the son carried the wood upon his back. And he carried it up the hill. And just, and he said, the, the son said to the father, Father, where is the lamb for the sacrifice? At this point, a lamb had never been offered. Until now. He said, Father, where is the lamb for the sacrifice? And then he turns to his son and says, My son, the Lord will provide himself a lamb for the sacrifice. If you take that in its original context and you take it back to the Hebrew root, it says, My son, God himself shall be the lamb for the sacrifice. Hear what I'm saying? He said, you ain't going to die. God is going to take the place of my God. God is going to take your place. God is going to be the lamb for the sacrifice. 
And then Jesus comes down the road, and there is John, and John says, Behold, the Lamb of God that, <laughs> hey, amen, that takes away the sins of the world. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That word behold means catch the vision. This is it. That's the vision. Abraham saw the lamb from afar off. He saw the lamb. He saw a vision of the coming Messiah. And God spared Isaac and he said, Abraham, do not take this mouth, do not kill your son. He said, for I see that you fear God. I know that you fear God. For you have not withheld your only son from me. Thy only son. Wait a minute. He had another son because he moved outside of the promise of God. He moved. He moved outside of the will of God. Because he was trying to help God's promise come to pass in his own life. And he got something he didn't really bargain for. He didn't really want what he got. And God said, you've not withheld your only son from me. God said, I'm not going to count that mistake that you had. That mistake you made, that, that place where you stepped out of me. I'm not going to count it against you. He said, this is the promise. This is what I've said to you. And he said, because you've held, because you've not held back your only son. Now I'm going to bless you. And he said that he looked and there was a, a ram with his horns caught in the thicket. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God made a way of escape where there was no way. It looked impossible, but we serve the God of the impossible. Amen. With him, the impossible becomes possible. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Everybody around you telling you, oh, it's too late. Don't believe it. You, you can't. Are you crazy for believing that? Don't you tell him, yeah, I'm crazy enough to believe God for it. If he said it, he'd do it because he ain't a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. But he said that he would do what he said he would do. He'll do what he said he'd do. He said, my word will not return back unto me void. But it will go back, it will go out and do what it was sent to do. Amen. Jesus is the word of God made flesh. Amen. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. God in flesh. And he did for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. Think about this. The same wilderness they came out of into the promised land after being in the wilderness 40 years. He went into the same wilderness and 40 days did what they couldn't do for 40 years because they were messing around and they were they were putting themselves in a spiritual captivity by murmuring and complaining. And going into spiritual adultery. And they walked into their own desires. And they missed their promised land. A lot of them did. Because God had to wait for that generation to die off. God said, I can't let them go in to the place where I've got to have them. Because they don't believe me. So he had to wait for a generation to die off. So he could bring in those that would have faith. Those that would believe God for a miracle. Those are the ones that God used. Do you know that Joshua, according to rabbinical teachings, he was 101 years old. Caleb was in his 80s. Joshua was in his hundreds when they went in and took over the promised land. Age has nothing to do with God's ability to use your life. You could be one to a hundred and one. Lord have mercy. Age is but a number. And a zip code. A age is but a number. <laughs> but it has no bearing on what God can do in your life. It has no, no hold on your life. 
if you don't let it. God can use you from 1 to 101 or 1 to 121, whatever. God can use your life if you'll surrender your life to him. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Bible says, for those laughing at you and not with you and for you, for being happy with you, for those laughing against you and laughing at your hopes and dreams and desires in God, I'm going to tell you this right now. Galatians 6 and 7. It said, be ye not deceived. God is not mocked. What a man sows, he shall also reap it. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God has got the last laugh. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let me tell you something. There's a time to laugh and a time to cry. Ecclesiastes 3, 4. God laughs at his enemies. That's what our Bible says. Proverbs 1, 26. Because they wouldn't come to God and they wanted to do their own thing, when they fall into calamity, God laughs at the enemy. When they try to do their own thing and think that they're going to destroy God and they think they're powerful than God. Let me tell you something. When the rebellion in heaven happened and Satan and his angels fell, God never moved from the throne. He just, I can imagine God almost snickering. <laughs> check the choir boy. He told the other angels, check the choir boy. He thinks he's big and bad to rise up against me and all of heaven that stood with the Father in heaven rose up against the enemy. Let me tell you something. They can all worship. They can all bring a word and they can all do warfare. But let me tell you something. A third of heaven fell at the rebellion and heaven became silent. There was a period of uh, there, there, the volume of heaven's worship had fallen. The volume had been turned down on the worship, on the praise, on the seeking God. Let me tell you something. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Your Bible says that the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. Not those. That which was lost. That's what your Bible says. Amen. What was lost? The worship of God. The fellowship of God, the relationship of God was lost when Satan and his angels fell from the grace of God. But let me explain this to you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Jesus came to restore the worship. He came to restore a relationship with God the Father. Amen. That's what he came to do. To bring you into a place of his holy of holies. To bring you into his presence. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. I did not know I was going to be doing this kind of a video, but glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Well, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let me tell you something. It's good to have joy in God. Because the Bible said that the joy of the Lord, you know, he, he maketh rich and addeth no sorrows. The blessings of the Lord, he maketh rich and addeth no sorrows. Let me tell you this. Nehemiah 8 and 10. Nehemiah prophesied to a man and he said, The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. When you are going through trouble, the Bible said in the book of James, he says, count it all joy when you go through divers temptations and trials. When you're going through hell, keep on going, but consider it all joy when you're going through it, knowing that the testing of your faith is to, read, that is to make you stronger. Amen. God is strengthening you even in the test you're going through. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And no matter what you're going through, no matter what devil's laughing at you saying, who do you think you are? <laughs> I know your past. <laughs> who do you think you are to serve God? Who do you think you are to talk about his goodness? 
You can turn, turn the table on the devil and say, I know who I am in Jesus Christ. I am a son of God. My elder brother Jesus defeated you 2,000 years ago on an old Roman cross by the power of his blood. Let me tell you why, my friends. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And you can have joy in this. Amen. Because, see, the Bible said that the disciples came back because they were joyful that demons were cast out by the name of Jesus. And he said, don't rejoice that demons are subject to you because of me. He said, rather rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Rejoice that you have relationship, that you have worship, that you have intimacy with the Lord that they don't have. Rejoice that you've got that. Not that they're subject to you because of me. But rejoice because of who you are in me. Not because of what's going on around you. But because of who I am in you. And who you are in me. Rejoice at that fact, he said. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Colossians 2.15 said, Having disarmed the princes of darkness, the powers of darkness. It says, after he had disarmed the powers of darkness, he made an open spectacle of them. Wait a minute, let me tell you one more thing real quick. The Bible said, he who is enthroned in the heavens laughs. Psalms 2, 41. Or Psalms 2, 4, sorry. Psalms 2, 4. He who's enthroned in the heavens laughs. I want you to understand something. The Bible said in the book of Ephesians, he is enthroned, and it said, far above every principality and power. Far above every principality and power. He is enthroned in heaven. But now check this out. We are too. What do you mean? He said in Ephesians, he also said, and he has made us to sit with him in heavenly places. Far above every principality, power, and ruler of darkness. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Colossians 2.13 is where I want to go with this before I close the service. Amen. Before I close and say amen and God bless and good night. I want to go there with you to Colossians. Has somebody got something out of this message today? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13. And I'm going to close right there. Or 15. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hold on. Well, well, well. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Okay, there you go. Colossians 2.15. And having... Uh, actually, let's go to verse 14. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. No, I want to go to... Uh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Hallelujah. Verse uh, 13, amen. And you being dead in your sins and your uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven all your trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us. The writing on the wall was blotted out. Hey, <laughs> thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Blotting out the handwriting on the ordinance of the ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. He took the very thing, the accusations against your life, 
your very sins and he nailed them to the cross. Let me tell you, at that moment, heaven slammed the gavel down and said the case is dismissed against your life. If you'll believe in the power of the blood of Jesus Christ and do what he said to do and come to him and truly repent of your sins and turn from your wicked ways, he's nailed it to the cross. He's threw the book at the enemy. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let me tell you, that book has your name in it, the book of life, the Lamb's book of life. Through the book of the enemy, it said, check the book. They're forgiven. You back off of them. That's what God's going to tell the enemy on your behalf today. In Jesus' name, thank you, Holy Ghost. Well, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Blot now the handwriting of the ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross, nailing it to his cross. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them, he made a spectacle of them openly, triumphing over them in it. The word spectacle openly, the word spectacle means to publicly humiliate, to make fun of. He picked on the devil. He laughed at the devil and said, ha, 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 you thought you had me. Ha, ha, ha. Now you the one bowing under my feet. Ha, ha, ha. You thought you had my baby. Well, ha, ha, ha. You going to let him go, devil. Ha, ha, ha. Let me tell you something, friends. The only place the devil has anywhere to be is under your feet. That's the only place he has the right to be is under your feet. You don't need him in your pocketbook. You don't need him in your, in your family, in your home. You tell the devil where to get back to and tell him, get under my feet in Jesus' name. Like Mother Abigail said in the movie The Stand, Get thee hence, low spirit. And you know, she said, get thee hence, low spirit. Get under my feet, devil. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. But you know what? God is making fun of the enemy right now. The enemy's been saying, you'll never get saved. Your family won't be saved. Oh, you're a hopeless cause. You just keep having dreams, but... I'm going to make sure they never get to them. I'm going to make sure your dreams don't live. But you die wishing your dreams were living. That's what the enemy's telling you right now. But my God said he would supply all your needs. He'll take care of all your dreams. Don't stop dreaming because the Bible said, without a dream, the people perish. My people perish. Without a vision, the people perish. without a dream, without a vision of the night, without something being held on into your life that keeps you strong in your faith, you're going to die without that. So I'm talking to every dreamer, every believer. God has got the last laugh on your behalf. He will defeat the... He's already defeated the enemy, but let me tell you something. In the defeat of the enemy comes a victory of joy because... We overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. The word testimony means to say it again. Say it again. Go out and say it again. Tell everybody what God has done for you, my friends. Tell everybody about the goodness of the Lord. When I think about his goodness and what he done for me, Think about his goodness and how he set me free and made me want to shout, 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 shout all night, all night, all night, all night. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now look at this, y'all. Look at this. Just look at it. Look at this, y'all. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I want y'all to understand something. He said on that day he will say, enter in the joy of the Lord. Well done, thou good and evil servant. Enter into thy place of rest. But there's another chapter and another verse where he said, Enter into the joy of the Lord that was set before you. Enter into this joy. The Bible said, Seeing the joy that was set before him. The joy to come. 
Jesus endured the suffering of the cross. And I close saying this, y'all. God's got the last laugh. He saw you and me coming down that aisle, coming down that grocery store aisle, going down the church aisle. He saw you falling on your face before him, pulling that car over and giving your life to Jesus. He saw it all, baby. He saw the joy that was set before him. Not just him being restored back to the Father. Not just him going home to be with the Father. But the joy that was set before him that you and I would be written in the Lamb's book of life. That was the joy that was set before him. That was the joy. The fruit of his labor was seeing you and me come to the foot of the cross. Because what did he shout at the cross? It is finished. When he said it is finished, he had every devil in hell on the run. Let me tell you something, baby. It ain't over till God said it's over. I know they talk about some fat lady singing, but I think she went on some weight loss program because let me tell you something. It's not over till God said it's over. He didn't say it's over when the fat lady sings. He said it's over when I say it's over. Come on, somebody. <laughs> oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I do love you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. Bless God. I believe people are going to get hit with joy right now. In Jesus' name, receive joy. Joy unspeakable. Hallelujah. He said, in the presence of God, it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. Lord, I thank you for your glory. But thank you, Lord, for the joy unspeakable coming upon your people right now. Lord, I thank you that you're giving your, that, that you're laughing because you've got the last laugh, Lord. Lord, thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Let me tell you something. Remember when Abraham was talking with God and Sarah was talking with God and, and they was talking about the future of Isaac and he said, what are you going to do about the other son, the one that I that I got from my handmaiden, Hagar? Because what are you going to do with him? And God said, I've still got plans for him. I still got plans for Ishmael. You know, I tell you something. If you want to hear God laugh, tell him your plans. Let me tell you something. God's got plans and dreams for you that you didn't, that you didn't even know of. Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, For I know the thoughts, the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts of good and not of evil. Thoughts to prosper you. Thoughts to give you an expected end. Then you're going to go and pray and you're going to find me when you seek for me with your whole heart. But let me tell you something now, y'all. You might have started something in your life and you're not happy with the outcome. God's going to take your plans and turn them to his plans. And his plans are going to be greater than your plans. And let me tell you something. God will give you the desires of your heart. When your desires become his desires, then God gives you the desires of your heart. Because if he gives you what you wanted, you might mess it up or it might be something bad and it would end up destroying your life. So when your desires become the desires of God, hey, Pastor Mike, God bless you, brother. Amen. When your desires become the desires of God, whatever he desires, that's your desire. That's when God moves on your life. That's when he manifests a miracle for you. That's when he does something in your life. Amen. Am I preaching to somebody here today? Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. If you're lost or backslid, God's still got a plan for your life, my friend. And he's going to use you right where you are. He don't ask you to clean up before you come into his presence and say, well, Lord, I, I've got to get this right. You know, don't say, oh, Lord, I got to get this right. I'm, I got to do this. I got to do that before I can come into your presence. No. He says, come as you are. He said, whoever comes to me, I'll by no means cast out. And he said, but you can only come to me as the spirit is drawing. 
He said, all that the Father gives me are mine. Nobody comes to the Father but by me. And whoever comes to me, I will by no means cast out. He said, but you can only come as the Spirit is drawing. There's a limitation, a stipulation right there. The only limitation is you can come only when the Spirit of God is drawn. That's a stipulation too. You can only come when it's God dealing with your heart. No man comes to the Father but by me, he said. And no man can come to me lest the Spirit draw. But he said, if I, he, he said, if you come to me, I'll by no means cast you out. He said, I don't care how messed up you are. He said, I don't care how strung out you are. Listen, somebody needs to share this message that God's got the last laugh. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. You might have found, you know, you, you might have tried to find. You might have tried to find your piece at the bottom of the bottle. But let me tell you something. You might have hit rock bottom, but the highest place is at his feet. My Lord. I'll say that again. You might have hit rock bottom, but just look up because the highest place is at his feet. You can't make it without God. God's got a plan and a purpose for your life. If you're lost or backslid, pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I come to you a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross, that God the Father raised you from the dead, and I am saved. In Jesus' name, Lord, fill me with your spirit. Wash me and cleanse me that I might make heaven my home. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory, hallelujah, Father God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. If you've been blessed by this message and you prayed that prayer, I want you to write to me. Let me know what God has done for you. Kid Henry, K-I-D-D-H-E-N-R-Y 617 at gmail.com. Kid Henry, K-I-D-D-H-E-N-R-Y 617 at gmail.com. I want to celebrate this new life with you. All of heaven celebrating over that one soul that just came to repentance through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, if you're sick in your body, I curse every devil of sickness in the name of Jesus. I command every spirit of cancer to dry up and die, but you to live and not die. In the name of Jesus, every spirit of heart disease, I break its power by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I take authority over the spirit of heart disease. I thank you, Lord, that Jesus, you are the heart regulator. Lord, regulate their hearts even now, God. In Jesus' name, every symptom, every sickness, every issue in the tissue be healed. In the name of Jesus and receive a creative miracle from the body part rooms in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen, hallelujah, Lord. Amen. I tell you something, friends. Lately, there's been a fire stirred up again within me, a greater fire, a greater passion. I'm not going to be satisfied till I see what was written in the book of Acts in the house of God again. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. A man falls 50 feet to his death, busts his head on the sidewalk, dies and goes into eternity, and the man of God runs down the flight of stairs, calls him back into his body in Jesus' name, and every bit of brain matter and everything came back together. It happened for a man who the world very much knows, Robert Montgomery. Did you know that? That he was a secular entertainer, he was an entertainer that done things for the world, to entertain the world. But when he was a baby, he was rushed to Azusa Street. Even though it's not in Wikipedia about him being in Azusa Street, it's in the history books of Azusa Street. And it's in his memoirs about Azusa. 
His mother did not rush him when his brain matter had splattered. He, she did not rush him to the emergency room. She rushed him to the place of God. His mama was a woman of faith and power. And she put him in the presence of God at Azusa Street. And the brain matter that had splattered on the floor was now restored into his body. His whole head was totally healed by the power of the Holy Ghost of God. Not one stitch was ever needed. God totally repaired the body. Until I see miracles like that in the house of God, I'm not going to quit pressing till I see the blessing. I'm not going to quit until I see that in the house of God. I'm not going to quit even now. I'm just saying, I'm after what happened in the old church to happen in this one. Because the latter and the the latter and the former rain are supposed to mix together. Come on, somebody. We need to see the demonstration and power of the word preached in our lives again. If we're ever going to reach this young generation, we got to see what they saw. And they will come back to the foot of the cross. They'll come and give their life to the Lord when they see us walking in the same wonders of the word of God. But the problem is a lot of people ain't hungry for it. A lot of people are hungry to receive. And a lot of people are hungry. They, they, they want to eat on stuff like that. They want to find stuff like that. But a lot of people ain't hungry enough to give that. They're not hungry enough to give their life fully to the Lord. That people might be changed. If that is you, though, and you're, and you're saying, Lord, I want to do more for you. I pray that God ignite a fire under your feet, that God would get you to move in, in the miraculous, in the name of Jesus, that he won't let you sleep till you get out there and do the word of God, till you get out there and proclaim his wonders, till you are filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. Hallelujah, God. Lord, stir up the fire within your people, God, in Jesus' name. Set us ablaze for your wonders, God, in Jesus' name. Set us ablaze for your glory, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Set us on fire that people will come around the world to watch us burn for you, Lord, and that souls will be one to you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Well, I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Bless God. Amen. Hallelujah. Stir up the fire, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. The fire of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, God. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit. There's a sweet presence. In this place today. Thank you Holy Ghost. I love you Lord Jesus. Amen. I put a mandate on the church. That Paul put on the church. By the Lord. Stir up the gifts that's within you. That was given to you by the laying on of hands. Stir up them gifts. Fan the flame of the fire in your soul. In Jesus' name, amen, hallelujah, Holy Ghost, I love you, Lord Jesus, amen, hallelujah, Lord. Now, for everybody bound up in your mind, in your life, I curse every devil of bondage in the mind and in the body. I charge it to loose you and let you go free. In the name of Jesus, every addiction receive an eviction by holy conviction now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus, amen. Because the Bible said, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. Lord Jesus, set them all free, God, that are watching right now in the name of Jesus. You said, Lord, also that we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. 
So, Lord, let us overcome in Jesus' name. Let us testify to the goodness of who you are, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you for giving us the power. The righteous are as bold as lions. Thank you for giving us the power to roar within us. To roar within us, Lord. Roar within us. In Jesus' name, God. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Father God, I thank you for this service today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. According to Nahum 1 and 9, the attack cannot come against your life a second time. According to Nahum 1 and 9. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Now, I want you to understand something. He is here in this place. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. If you've never been filled with the Holy Ghost and fire, Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and in fire. Amen. And I, I just thank you, Lord, right now that he said out of your belly would flow rivers of living water. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Do it now, Lord. Stir up the fire within your people, in Jesus' name. Fire! 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 Washing in the water of the Word. In Jesus' name, Rosho Korobo Sanda, Bereke de Mehanda Rabo Sanda, Beleke Handa Rabo Se, Aradama Sanda. In Jesus' name, fire of God. In Jesus' name, amen. If you got saved, healed, set free, delivered, filled with the Holy Ghost of God and fire, write to me, let me know what God has done for you. Kid Henry, K I D D H E N R Y. 617 at gmail.com. I love you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, if you desire to give, we, uh, we now have, um, we now have Cash App. You can go to cash tag Our Full Revival, capital H, capital F, capital R. Our Full Revival. And you can give that way or you can go to Messenger and it's linked into another account for us. So you can go and give that way as well. And your love gifts, large or small. Thank you for everyone that does give. Your love gifts, large or small, keep helping us bring the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ around the world. Not just here, but abroad as well. I love you. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals. Where it's always the hour for revival. I'm your brother in the Lord, brother HR, and it is always the hour Full revival. See you in the next meeting or in the air in heaven. I love you. God bless. Bye-bye.